Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be talking about AWS Solution Architect Associate Real Exam Question and Answers. So this is going to be a series of videos that I'll be posting subsequently and you can watch all the question and answers over here. So this is the part one of the series. And if you like the video and if it was helpful to you, then do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel as it gives more motivation to create informative videos like these. So without any further ado, let's get started with the video so our first question is a company collects data from te for temperature humidity and atmospheric pressure in cities across multiple continents the average volume of data that the company collects from each site daily is 500 gb each site has a high speed internet connection the company wants to aggregate the data from all these global sites as quickly as possible in a single Amazon S3 bucket, the solution must minimize operational complexity. So the things to keep in mind is that a company is basically collecting the data from each site, which is around 500 GB. And uh, the company wants to aggregate this data from all the global sites as quickly as possible in an Amazon S3 bucket. So the solution should be operationally, uh, operational, uh, should minimize the operational complexity. Now let's look what all options are there. So A option, it says, turn on S3 transfer acceleration on destination S3 bucket. Use multi-part uploads to directly upload site data to the destination S3 bucket. Then comes option B, upload the data from each site to an S3 bucket in the closest region. Use S3 cross-region replication to copy objects to the destination S3 bucket. Then remove the data from the origin S3 bucket. Option C is schedule AWS Snowball Edge storage optimized device jobs daily to transfer data from each site to the closest region. Use S3 cross-region replication to copy objects to the destination S3 bucket. Then the option D is upload the data from each site to an Amazon EC2 instance in the closest region. Store the data in an Amazon EBS elastic block store volume. At regular intervals, take an EBS snapshot and copy it to the region that contains the destination S3 bucket. Restore the EBS volume in that region. Now let's look into the correct option. The correct answer is turn on S3 transfer acceleration on the destination S3 bucket. Use multi-part uploads to directly upload site data to the destination S3 bucket. Now let's look into the next question, question number two. A company needs the ability to analyze the log files of its proprietary application. The logs are stored in JSON format in an Amazon S3 bucket. Queries will be simple and will run on demand. A solution architect needs to perform the analysis with minimal changes to the existing architecture. What should the solution architect do to meet these requirements with the least amount of operational overhead? And the options for these question is, Option A, use Amazon Redshift to load all the content into one place and run the SQL queries as needed. Option B, use Amazon CloudWatch logs to store the logs, run SQL queries as needed from the Amazon CloudWatch console. Option C, use Amazon Athena directly with Amazon S3 to run the queries as needed. Then option D, use AWS Glue to catalog logs, use a transient Apache Spark cluster on Amazon EMR to run the SQL queries as needed. Now let's see what is the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer is C, which is use Amazon Athena directly with Amazon S3 to run the queries as needed. And the reason why we are selecting this option is, and what does Amazon Athena actually does is, Amazon Athena is the least operational overhead solution because it is a serverless query service. The solution architect can query the logs stored in S3 directly without having to move the logs or set up any infrastructure, such as a data warehouse or data lake. Additionally, Athena charges are based only on the amount of data scanned by the queries. So the company pays only for resources it uses, which is cost effective. So that's why the answer is Amazon Athena. Now let's look into the next question. The next question is question number three, which says a company uses AWS organizations to manage multiple AWS accounts for different departments. The management account has an Amazon S3 bucket that contains project reports. The company wants to limit access to this S3 bucket to only users of accounts within the organization and AWS organizations. Which solution made these requirements with the least amount of operational overhead? And the option A is add the AWS principal org ID global condition key with the reference to the organization ID to the S3 bucket policy. 
Option B is create an organizational unit OU for each department. Add the AWS principle Oxpath global condition key to the S3 bucket policy. Option C is use AWS Cloud Trail to monitor the create account, invite account to organization, leave organization, and remove account from organization events. Update the S3 bucket policy accordingly. Option D is tag each user that needs access to the S3 bucket. Add the AWS principal tag global condition key to the S3 bucket policy. Now let's look into the correct option. And the correct option is option A, which says add the AWS principal org ID global condition key with the reference to the organization ID to the S3 bucket policy. So now let's look into the next question. Question number four. An application runs on an Amazon EC2 instance in a VPC. The application processes logs that are stored in Amazon S3 bucket. The EC2 instance needs to access S3 bucket without connectivity to the internet. So basically it wants to access S3 bucket without connecting to the internet. Which solution will provide private network connectivity to an Amazon S3 bucket? So create a gateway VPC endpoints through the S3 bucket. Option B is stream the logs to Amazon CloudWatch logs, export the logs to the S3 bucket. Option C is create an instance profile on Amazon EC2 to allow S3 access. Option D is create an Amazon API gateway API with a private link to access the S3 endpoints. Now let's look into the correct option and the correct option is option number A, create a gateway VPC endpoint to the S3 bucket. Now let's look into the next question, question number five, which says, a company is hosting a web application on AWS using a single Amazon EC2 instance that stores user uploaded documents in an Amazon EBS volume. So basically an EC2 instance is there that stores user uploaded documents in an Amazon EBS volume, which is attached to that particular EC2 instance. So for better scalability and availability, the company duplicated the architecture and created a second EC2 instance and EBS volume in another availability zone, placing both behind an application load balancer. So company basically duplicated this particular architecture, created one more EC2 instance and attached an EBS volume, but all this is being done in another availability zone and placing both behind an ALB application load balancer. So after completing this change, users reported that each time they refreshed the website, they could see some subset of the documents or other, but never all the documents at the same time. So there were certain problems that were faced by the users once this approach is adopted by the company. So what solution should a solution architect propose to ensure users see all their documents at once and the options are copy the data to both ebs volumes contain all the documents configure the application load balancer to direct a user to the server with the documents option c is copy the data from both ebs volumes to amazon efs modify the application to save new documents to amazon efs then option d is configure the application load balancer to send the request to both the servers return each document from the correct server now let's look into the correct option correct option is option c which says copy the data from both the ebs volumes to amazon efs and then modify the application to save new documents to the amazon efs so that is what they want to give as a solution that you copy the data from both the EBS to one EFS that is elastic file system and finally modify the application to save new documents to Amazon EFS. So that's where uh, users will be able to view all the documents in one go. Now let's look into the sixth question. And the sixth question is a company uses NFS to store large video files in on-premises network attached storage. Each video file ranges in size from 1 MB to 500 GB. The total storage is 70 TB and is no longer growing. The company decides to migrate the video files to Amazon S3. So basically, the storage is 70 TB now and the video files are not increasing. And the company wants to migrate the video files to Amazon S3. The company must migrate the video files as soon as possible while using the least po possible network bandwidth. So the company doesn't want to use a lot of network bandwidth. So with the least possible network bandwidth, they want to transfer these video files to Amazon S3. Which solution will meet these requirements? So these are your four options that are given over here. Option A says create an S3 bucket, create an IAM rule that has permissions to write to the S3 bucket, use the AWS CLI to copy all files locally to the S3 bucket. I think which is not a feasible option because the number of data, the amount of data that it has is quite huge, which is 70 TB. Then the option B, it says create an 
AWS Snowball Edge job, receive a Snowball Edge device on premises, use the Snowball Edge client to transfer data to the device, return the device so that AWS can import the data into Amazon S3. Then the option C is deploy an S3 file gateway on premises, create a public service endpoint to connect to the S3 file gateway, create an S3 bucket. Create a new NFS file share on the S3 file gateway. Point the new file share to the S3 bucket. Transfer the data from the existing NFS file share to the S3 file gateway. Then the option D, which is set up an AWS direct connect connection between on-premises network and AWS. Deploy an S3 file gateway on-premises. Create a public virtual network. Uh, sorry, interface to connect to the S3 file gateway, create an S3 bucket, create a new NFS file share on the S3 file gateway, point the new file share to the S3 bucket, transfer the data from the existing NFS file share to the S3 file gateway. Now let's look into the correct option and the correct option is B that you create an AWS Snowball Edge job and receive a Snowball Edge device on premises then use the Snowball Edge client to transfer the data to the device. So basically move your data to the Snowball Edge device and then return the device to AWS so that they can import the data onto your Amazon S3 buckets. Now let's look into question number seven. A company has an application that ingests incoming messages. Dozens of other applications and microservices then quickly consume these messages. The number of messages varies drastically and sometimes increases suddenly to one lakh each second. The company wants to decouple the solution and increase scalability. Which solution meets these requirements? So the options are A, persist the message from Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics, configure the consumer applications to read and process the messages. Then option B, deploy the ingestion application on Amazon EC2 instances in an auto-scaling group to scale the number of EC2 instances based on CPU metrics. And then option C is write the messages to Amazon Kinesis data streams with a single shard. Use an AWS Lambda function to pre-process these messages and store them in Amazon DynamoDB. Configure the consumer applications to read from the DynamoDB to process the messages. Then option D is publish the messages to an Amazon SNS topic with multiple Amazon SQS subscriptions. Configure the consumer applications to process the messages from the queues. Now let's look into the correct option. And the correct option is D where you publish the messages to Amazon SNS topic with multiple Amazon SQS subscriptions. Configure the consumer applications to process the messages from the queues. Now let's look into the next question and the next question is question number eight which says a company is migrating a distributed application to AWS. The application serves variable workloads. The legacy platform consists of a primary server that coordinates jobs across multiple compute nodes. The company wants to modernize the application with a solution that maximizes resiliency and scalability. How should a solutions architect design the architecture to meet these requirements? And the options are option A, configure an Amazon SQS queue as a destination for the jobs. Implement the compute nodes with Amazon EC2 instances that are managed in an auto scaling group. Configure EC2 auto scaling to use scheduled scaling. Then option B, configure an Amazon SQS queue as a destination for the jobs. Implement the compute nodes with Amazon EC2 instances that are managed in an auto scaling group. Configure EC2 auto scaling based on the size of the queue. Option C is implement the primary server and the compute nodes with Amazon EC2 instances that are managed in an auto scaling group. Configure AWS CloudTrail as a destination for the jobs. Configure EC2 auto scaling based on the load on the primary server. Then option D is implement the primary server and the compute nodes with Amazon EC2 instances that are managed in an auto scaling group. Configure Amazon Event Bridge or Amazon Client Watch. CloudWatch events as a destination for the jobs. Configure EC2 auto scaling based on the load of the compute nodes. Now let's look into the correct option and the correct option is B. Configure an Amazon SQS queue as a destination for the jobs. Implement the compute nodes with Amazon EC2 instances that are managed in an auto scaling group. Configure EC2 auto scaling based on the size of the queue. Now let's look into the next question. Question number nine, which says, a company is running an SMB file server in its data center. The file server stores large files that are accessed frequently for the first few days after the files are created. After seven days, the files are rarely accessed. 
The total data size is increasing and is close to the company's total storage capacity. A solutions architect must increase the company's available storage space without losing low latency access to the most recently accessed files. The solutions architect must provide file lifecycle management to avoid future storage issues. So which solution will meet these requirements? And the options are A, use AWS data sync to copy data that is older than seven days from SMB file server on AWS. Option B, create an Amazon S3 file gateway to extend the company's storage space, create an S3 lifecycle policy to transition the data to S3 Glacier Deep Archive after seven days. Then option C, create an Amazon FSx for Windows file servers file system to extend the company's storage space. And then option D, it says install a utility on each user's computer to access Amazon S3, create an S3 lifecycle policy to transition the data to S3 Glacier flexible retrieval after seven days. And the correct option is B, which is create an Amazon S3 file gateway to extend the company's storage space, create an S3 lifecycle policy to transition the data to S3 Glacier Deep Archive after seven days. Now let's look into the next question, question number 10. This question says a company is building an e-commerce web application on AWS. The application sends information about new orders to an Amazon API Gateway REST API to process. The company wants to ensure that the orders are processed and the order they are received. Which solution will meet the requirement? And the options are A, use an API Gateway integration to publish a message to an Amazon simple notification service topic when the application receives an order subscribe an aws lambda function to topic to perform processing then option b it says use an api gateway integration to send a message to sqs fifo queue when the application receives an order configure the sqs fifo queue to invoke an aws lambda function for processing then option c is use an api gateway authorizer to block any request while the application processes are an order and then option D, it says use an API gateway integration to send a message to an Amazon simple queue service, standard queue when the application receives an order. Configure the SQS standard queue to invoke an AWS Lambda function for processing. And the correct option is B, use an API gateway integration to send a message to SQS service, FIFO queue when the application receives an order. Configure the SQS FIFO queue to invoke an AWS Lambda function for processing that's it for today so i hope you like the video and all the best for your exam and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the comment section below if you found this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more such informative videos thank you bye bye